At InDigital, we know that public safety professionals hold themselves to a high standard. In fact, standard doesn't do it justice. In over 25 years working alongside you, carrying millions of calls over our IP networks, your dedication has inspired us. That's why our ESI net goes beyond industry standards, not only I3 compliant, but designed to adapt to future development for a network you can count on when it matters most. Learn more at indigital.net. Here in Greenville County, we have eight different places where a 911 call can be answered. It is the largest county in South Carolina. It's a challenge. The type of information that a telecommunicator gets from Radius Plus is location-based technology. You can see where the caller is, if they have a medical issue, if they speak a different language. They're immediately able to text to that caller in their native language. It reduces response times because it immediately gets first responders where they need to be. Carbine, it's multimedia. You can get text, translate to whatever language, getting away with the legacy equipment and going into a cloud-based solution. It's the first time in U.S. history that we have an EziNet through cloud-native call handling. As a police officer, to have the victim go video, that's un unheard of. You're getting upgrades every month, not every year. To schedule your free Carbine demo, please visit carbine.com WTT. If Within the Trenches has ever taught you something, open your eyes to what it is like to be a 9-1 dispatcher or has inspired you to become one, then help support us and join our Patreon. Get exclusive bonus content, one-of-a-kind swag, discounts on merchandise, ad-free early access to new episodes, and much more. To join, please visit patreon.com slash WTT podcast. And if you're an industry partner, we have something for you as well. And now for the show. This is Jordan, and you're listening to the Code 7 Podcast Network. Warning. This episode contains the three A's of podcasting. Adult content, adult language, and awesomeness. You've been warned. Hey, what's going on? This is Ricardo with the Code 7 Podcast Network, and this is going to be episode 450 of Within the Trenches, True Stories from the 91 Dispatchers Who Live Them. This episode is sponsored by InDigital as well as Rapid Deploy and Carbine. Shout out to patrons as always. And this episode is actually going to be um, just straight up audio. Like, I mean, there's video, of course, <laughs> but, um, you know, the video part is just going to be, uh, you know, an, an image and the audio and everything. Um, but then of course, all of you who are listening here on Apple podcasts and your, you know, favorite dispatching, uh, dispatching, no, <laughs> your, your, your favorite podcasting app is what I meant to say, <laughs> not dispatching app. Um, you know, you'll, you're, you're going to be hearing all the audio anyway. There's, there's, you won't be missing anything. Um, but this episode is going to be the open mic, um, portion of imagine listening. So 449 was the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of course, the, the harder part, um, you know, some of the harder stories, still powerful, impactful, all of that. But uh, um, this is the lighter side of dispatch now. And this is the, the funny stuff that you don't always get to hear. And also, you know, I'm a firm believer that um, laughing is good medicine. So that's what open mic is about. And that's why it's part of Imagine Listening. Because we start out with the emotionally intense part first, and then, of course, we end with some humor. So the stories you're about to hear are are pretty nuts. There, <laughs> there, there's some pretty outrageous ones that were shared on this one, and uh, I, I hope you enjoy it. It was a lot of fun in that room with everyone, and uh, I, I'm sure you've seen it already. I've posted some pictures um, and, and if you haven't seen them, it's, it's just, it's a picture of me with a WTF look and another one with my mouth dropped, like what? And, and I'm pretty sure I, I know which, which, uh, which stories were shared during those times, but either way, that's just a glimpse of what you're about to hear. So, <laughs> uh, without further ado, here's episode 450 of the Within the Trenches podcast. And this is open mic. Dispatch. There is no one over here to cook our lunch. 
We are waiting for our lunch, and there's no one here to yeah. cook our lunch. All right, calm down. Where are you at? The group home. Now, what are you going to do? We'll get some help over there for you, okay? Welcome to Open Mic, where we visit the lighter side of dispatch, because laughing is good medicine. Hello, hello. What is going on? This is Ricardo of the Code Summit Podcast Network, and this is Within the Trenches, true stories from the 9 dispatchers who live them. But we are doing an open mic session, and I have a live audience here with me. Let's hear it. <laughs> Damn, that's sexy. That was, that was good. Well done. Very nice. So we just went through an emotionally intense Imagine Listening session, but now we're moving to the lighter side of Dispatch. And I will say right off the bat, it takes one story for all of them to whoo, go downhill. So we'll see how long that takes. Last year, it was episode 400, I believe, and the first story, it's like, holy hell. That's the best, though. It's, it's yeah. the best. It, that's what that's all it takes. And and after I've done this with you, I don't know. Since 2017? A, a shit ton of times. And it's the, the imagine listening is always hard to listen to because it always chokes you up. But then this part of it is so much fun. So Hell yes. So just let's go. Let's go. Who's got a story? Come on, funny. Shit! <laughs> had to find the speaker. Oh my God. Holy good God. You know Man. what's amazing is oh. those who are recording back there who are probably listening, they're playing. Oh! What was that? Wow. I hope you can hear. Are you bleeding? Go ahead. This isn't so much about a call. It's about a uh, dispatcher foot and mouth type thing. Oh, um, we had a, our jail building is separate from our comm center. And one of the deputies had a female that was drunk and ended up spitting in his face. And he comes up and he's telling us a story. At the jail, he grabbed a bottle of hand sanitizer and kind of went like this. And, rubbed, and he's like, man, that, that shit burned. I said, no shit, dumbass, it's rubbing alcohol. What I didn't know is my hands free had died and stuck op- the mic stuck open. So everybody in the county heard me tell that to the deputy, including the county commissioners who were doing ride-alongs that night. So, <laughs> yeah, my, my comm center director had a word with me about this. <laughs> Dude, and that's hard, right? Especially when you're on the phone and you say something because you can't, you can't bring it back. No. You just got to maneuver. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm chronically white, okay? I'm pigment challenged and I my emotions are pretty much show on my face. And so I answered a 911 call and it was an accidental call, what we call a butt dial. And the lady was having a very interesting conversation with a man who was in the car with her, and she was telling him exactly what she was going to do to him when they got home. <laughs> I mean, we're talking details. She was very, very detailed. And, yeah. Um, yeah, she was like, oh, yeah. Mong chicka wow wow. Yeah. He, he, w- he was going to be very, very happy when they got home. So I, I hang up. Uh, yeah, I'm from Texas. <laughs> Could be. Um, so I've got the call, and I hang up. And I have to call back just to make sure there's not an emergency. Yeah, I, well, she didn't know. Well, she didn't even know she called. So I called her, hey, this is Susan, 911 department. Did you have an emergency? I didn't call 911. Yes, ma'am, you did. And she goes, no, I did not call 911. Ma'am, you did call 911. Please do not make me repeat the conversation that you had with a gentleman in the car with you. And she said, what? (laughs) I said, I understand he's going to be very happy when the two of you get home. Oh my God, you heard that. Yes, ma'am, I did. She goes, I'm so sorry. I said, ma'am, not as sorry as I am. (laughs) Please lock your keypad. Please don't do that. Now, unfortunately, because it's a 911 center and everything's recorded, everybody saw my embarrassment and everybody in the call center went back and listened to that call. And so it was great entertainment for several hours. It wouldn't be true co-workers if they didn't go back and listen exactly. to it. Or even replay it while you were on the call. Bad thing is, that's a boner killer for that dude. Yeah. <laughs> Bonafide. Bonafide. Ha! Bonafide. Bonafide. Speaking of boners. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this guy calls and says his penis hurts. And I ask him what happens, and he said, Phil came over and messed him up. Well, what he really did, and take out your phones, if you Google man with 12 screws in his penis, the x-ray comes up. And he... Man, that's nuts. He... <laughs> <laughs> He put the 12 screws in his penis, you can find it on Google, um, to get more pain medication. So, yeah. You know, Wait, the, why would you just request the pain medication? Where was it? Why go where, that far? So I have an open mic funny. Um, it was years ago where the agency, I was on midnight shift with our crew, and we were trying to do Christmas, and we were putting up a tree, and I was on the radio, and we were trying to, I was trying to help with the lights, undo the lights. And I said, I accidentally keyed up and I was open and I said, your balls aren't working. <laughs> and the gentleman that was helping me was like, I'm sorry. And I said, well, your bulbs are out. And he's like, my balls are out. And I'm like, your bulbs, your bulbs, your bulbs. You know, and then the, lo the phone line started lighting up, and it was the officer saying, you're open, you're open, you're open, your, your mic's open. And I was like, my what's open? <laughs> it was just a bad, it was a wonderful night, but it was very enjoyable, and the Christmas tree was beautiful in the morning, I'm just saying. But it was embarrassing. And you got to be known as that dispatcher. Okay, for those of you that remember what real tapes are okay those, are the worst. those were the worst but for those of us that lived through the tape era uh officer calls a colleague of mine and i sound exactly alike our husbands couldn't even tell he'd call and say is this you nope type of thing so officer calls i'm from oregon we got the beavers we've got the ducks i'm a duck the other girl is a beaver one of our officer calls he thinks it's her and he says Listen, you beaver piece of shit, you need to da 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 da. And I said, Excuse me. He said, Oh, to rewind the tape. And it went on the recorded line, and we saved it for his retirement. Oh, hell yes. It's not the way I thought that was going to well go. Well done. Well done. We had a guy call in and said that he had a hammer stuck up his ass. Time. And I said, a what? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I need an ambulance. I have a hammer stuck up my ass and I can't get it out. I said, okay. Got his address and <laughs> we, we dispatch a U.S. to the call with an impelled object is what we told him over the radio. And yeah. they get there and, of course, they're laughing and they call us afterwards and they're telling us, that he indeed had a ball peen hammer stuck up his ass head first. Oh. Ball peen's better than a claw. I mean, what's even funnier though was so there was a nurse and a doctor that lost their job over this because they shared the x ray. They didn't give a name or anything, but they shared the x ray on social media. And, <laughs> and, of course, that was a violation of hospital policy, and they did lose their job over it, but it was hilarious. Yeah. So, I mean... What was, that, uh, what was that one song that, or the album called that MC Hammer had? It was like, Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him? <laughs> Could you... I mean, at least it was the ball pin, because if it was a claw hammer, I mean, going up would be hurt, but coming out, that's going to leave a mark. Mine was short and simple, but... Uh, I had a call, uh, I was call taker that day, and I was taking a call from a gentleman who was explaining how pussy and gross his wound was, et cetera, et cetera. And so I typed in pussy. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow. 
Uh, mine's really more a caller, my favorite caller of all time, who called to say she had no pulse. And I had to, for five minutes on the phone, talk to her, well, you called me and we're talking. But no, I swear, I can't find my pulse. I don't have a pulse. I need an ambulance. I'm like, what? You're talking to me. And you're fine. <laughs> no, just had to send medical to prove she had a pulse and was alive. Wow. <laughs> Good Lord. See, when you first said it, and then you said that part, I was like, wait, the caller is the person who's saying right, right. the pulse, right? Yeah. <laughs> Holy hell. Maybe it was a ghost. Who knows? Well, wait, they got out there. So in my early years um, of dispatching, I was dispatched in a small town that had a college. And there's a lot of um, prank calls at this time before we could always find them. So I was super naive, green, na naive to life. And a guy called and said, there's um, on campus, there's a there's a, a horrible thing happening where there's these poor little chickens out in front of the... Um, one of the dorm rooms, and there's a bunch of boys running after them, and they're grabbing them, and they're choking them. And so uh, I dispatched the officers to uh -oh. boys choking their chicken. <laughs> and that may be the best one that I've heard. That may be, that, that's hilarious. That is, that is amazing. So if there's one thing I'm really good at, it's making myself look like an idiot, especially on the air. Uh, recently, I had an officer do a traffic stop, and it's our policy to clear them with their location. And this stop in particular happened to be in front of the restaurant Big Boy. And so I told him, you're clear, Big Boy. <laughs> And I immediately regretted it. <laughs> and later that day, he texted me and said, next time he's going to stop a car in front of Big Daddy's Tree Service. <laughs> I want to start by apologizing to all the men. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm very early in my career, I get a call from a very sweet caretaker who tells me that the gentleman that she takes care of is stuck in a chair. Okay, well, what do you mean he's stuck? She said, well, I was changing his bed clothes. So, no, nah, I work in Alabama. Just go with it. So she's changing the sheets on his bed. She picks him up and puts him in the chair, and he gets stuck. In the chair. So I ask her again, where is he stuck, ma'am? What kind of chair is this? In a plastic slat chair. Oh, no. She had him in his robe, and when she sat him in the chair, the slats separated and his twins fell. <laughs> and then the slats went back up, and he was stuck <laughs> I apologized so we sent an ambulance and uh, you know trauma scissors are not enough to cut a plastic slat chair so we had to send the fire department to cut the slats on on the chair to yeah the only thing he asked was that the fire department not cut his man parts <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I mean, how old, was this, you said an elderly gentleman? He was elderly, and apparently he was uh, very well blessed. <laughs> Didn't have mediocre balls, apparently. Went balls deep, though. Yes, balls. he did. Yes, he did. Ouch. Okay, we had one right here. Anybody else on that side? Oh, oh holy crap, we're going to have to go to that side now. So a few years ago, we had hired this sweet Southern Baptist, pure as the driven snow girl. She was amazing, the nicest girl. She's one of those that literally took the job so she could help people. You know, she's wonderful, loved her to death. We had a festival going on, and she took a call from a gentleman. He's like, I'm very upset. We've got a guy out here. He's got a T-shirt on, and I need an officer to come fix this problem. She's like, well, what's, what's the problem? Well, it says Peter for sale on this T-shirt. She's like, 
sir, what's the big deal? He's like, no, it says Peter for sale. She's like, I don't know who Peter is. Who is Peter? And she he goes, well, don't you, I'm sorry, don't you know who Peter is? She's like, no, sir, I don't know who Peter is. So unless you're done screwing around, I'm going to let you off the phone. And he goes, it's a dick. <laughs> and she goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Hangs up the phone on him and just airs the whole information. Uh, I bet that might have been the testicle festival that that, guy, that chick might have been before. <laughs> so six years ago, a call got, uh, was on my pending board, and it was for a female who said that she had a condom lost in her vagina. She couldn't find it. <laughs> I don't know. She couldn't find it. So I'm like looking through all my trucks that are sitting, and I'm like, who am I going to send to this? Like, who's going to this? Um, so I ended up picking a truck that had an EMT student on it. So I'm like, this will be great exposure for the EMT student. This will be great. <laughs> yes, pun intended. Um, and she had said on the 911 that she wanted the EMS personnel to go in and find it for her. <laughs> I decided to leave that part um, as a surprise for the crew on <laughs> scene. I didn't tell them that that's what she wanted. Yeah, because everybody would have been picking up that call. I was like, I'll, I'll take it. I'm in a route. I'm in a route. Yeah. So we had started getting phone calls from one of our local town parks that there was a group of teenagers being stupid, running off of the picnic tables. They had a rope over a tree. They weren't sure what they were doing, but it's a little town. They wanted them gone, blah, 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 blah. They had their phones out recording. And the one woman made a comment about the boy's pants were around his knees. And we're like, oh, okay, what are, what are they doing? We don't know. So, of course, we sent the town cops. <laughs> And as they're marking a location, 911 starts to ring. And it's this girl, and she's like, um, so we need an ambulance. And you can hear this dude just screaming in the background, bloody murder. And apparently they were filming pranks. You can find it on YouTube. And that's what they do. And the prank was he was tying said rope around testicles. Running, <laughs> running and jumping off the picnic table, but they were supposed to like loosen the rope so it didn't pah, hurt them. Apparently, as the cops pulled up, they freaked and rope basically lynched and testicles went pop. Oh no! <laughs> Literally popped them out. Right, so, yeah, that's exactly right, Mike. That, so, why, I mean, why do guys think, I mean, that, hey, I got nothing else to do, so let's tie a rope around my junk and just, like, do that. What is going on with your head that you think you want to mess with your balls? I mean, seriously. I, I, I don't even have, like, a response. For I, I don't either. It's like, I'm, I'm confused. I, uh, Right. It's like, ouch. It's like when she's talking about stuck in the slats, I'm like, oh, God, that's got to hurt so bad. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But better yet, they're on YouTube. Get that wow. <laughs> well, my uh, story, I'm going to have to take a shower after telling you this story. Oh it's God. horrible. It is horrible. We get a, a shoplifting call at uh, a big box store. And we, we, get, we get these three or four times a day. And the asset protection uh, lady, she says, I need some help with this one. Well, that's pretty unusual for her to say that. So we sent the officers there. Uh, they arrest her, uh, take the property back, give it back to Walmart. They take her to jail. And she gets to the jail. She's going through the book-in process. And with the book-in process, they have a procedure they do where you have to squat. And when she did that, out came uh, 
several hundred dollars worth of more property that belonged to this. Several hundred dollars worth. <laughs> Along with that, there was a car stereo speaker that she was using to... As an iPhone? No. <laughs> Magnetic car stereo speaker. So I, I don't know what was up in there. So, so here's the deal. A lot of that stuff nowadays, like when you return stuff, it goes straight to like, you know, the warehouse bin. Like they don't put it back on the shelf. So think twice if you're ordering like a box of return shit from Amazon or whatever, that could be up in someone's no-no square. I get what you're saying now. I was not expecting that. It's like Mary Poppins bag. Yeah, it's like, look, it's still coming out. It's like $200 worth of like... I, I want to. I want to know more. I, I do. I, I. I mean, there's a lot of this stuff. These questions. That I just want to know so much more because I'm that person. Who's got a quick one? You got one. Can you do it in two minutes? I, I can do the G rated one. In two minutes. No, we want the R rated one. No, it's not R, but um, so I worked for a county, and we were some parts were very rural, and some parts were connected to cities. And we got a call from somebody saying that they saw a kidnapping in progress, and it was the female was screaming and being dragged into a car. The male was very aggressive. Um, so we take the call and we didn't have enough resources nearby to chase them. So we called highway patrol as well as our neighboring agencies who some of their dispatchers are in this room right now. And so we were searching for this car. We got a great description, including a license plate, which is great, right? Best piece of information you can get. So we knew the address where the car belonged and we were searching and could not find this car, the two people involved. And we finally do a welfare check on the home later. And it turned out they were a married couple, and that was how they enjoyed their Saturday nights, is going to random people's neighborhoods and playing games. And so they had multiple people calling 911 because it was so realistic for everybody else involved. That was their role playing? Wow. Yeah. What? <laughs> and fortunately, the story will be very short. Um, I'll be it, pretty funny. So a hotel clerk calls because there is a guest who has been swimming in the pool, enjoying himself, and through, you know how the, the water flows and circulates through the pool and goes in? Well, he, the part where the water comes in, he had become stuck in. Because he was really enjoying himself in the pool. <laughs> Damn. The I, don't, do I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, it was once. It was once. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, I don't know these these guys and their their no, junk please. and plant themselves and sticking it in water outputs. Holy. All right, so your lunch is going to start at twelve thirty. So I was going to end it with a story that I usually do, but I will. Let you go instead. Uh, okay. You, you want to hear the last story? Rob knows which one it is. Okay, so I'll say this as fast as I can. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so I was going in one night. It was a uh, 1A to 5A um, shift. We did. Three twelves and a four. I don't know why. Every Wednesday it was that four hour. This one I was going for that last four hours. I'd already taken my nap. I was heading to work and stopped at the gas station because I was starving. Wanted to get something to eat, get something to drink. Also, got to try to stay awake, right? So I go into the gas station. I get me a 12-ounce Red Bull. How many of you energy drinks? Anything? Yeah? Okay. So you know, some of you might have issues with a lot of caffeine. I'm looking for something to eat, and I find something. It's a gas station burrito. It's a gas station burrito called the Red Bomb. Right, 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 yes. So I get it. I go to work, get there as early as I can so that I can microwave this shit so I can eat it, chug this Red Bull. I was thinking that I was going to be on backup phones and radios. Nah, son, I was on main phones. So I get over there. 
chugged this Red Bull, start destroying this burrito. I was like, damn, that was so good. Now, remember the name of the burrito. So I'm sitting there waiting for something to happen because there was nothing going on, right? It's like saying the Q word, just tempting fate. And then the phone rings. It's a pursuit in the county that's just south of us. They're calling us. We can put out a BOL, be on the lookout, because they're going to be coming into our county soon. And as I'm taking the call, I just, like, start twitching a bit. (laughs) My stomach, get that bubble gut, okay? And I start sweating immediately. I'm like, hell no, this cannot be happening. So I'm taking the call. I'm getting the information. I'm trying to hold it. I'm just thinking, come on, cheeks, stay together because this is bad. And if anybody was over there and they, because I was sweating so much, it probably smelled like beef, like it was bad. So I had sent a message on the MCT and stuff to the the rest of the folks there, my coworkers, if I have to get up to go use the bathroom, please make sure to take the call for me. Now, I don't know about your dispatch center, but mine had a bathroom on the inside, okay? I wasn't about to drop heat there. No. And then down the hall, okay, we had a locker room. Put them on hold, and I was like, I got to go down the hall. Hauled ass running to see the smoke coming out. Hopefully smoke. Not anything else, right? Hopefully. Go do my thing. Come back. I'm like, all right, I'll take the call. I'll take the call. I continue with the call. And then again, my stomach starts bubbling. I'm like, you, you, no. Why? Why is this happening? And I don't know if you've ever tried to hold in your gas, but it comes up like a back fart, you know? It comes up to the top. Like it hits the ribs and sounds like a xylophone. So I'm freaking out, man. And you know sequels. They're the worst, right? In the shit world, it's the same. So I put him on hold again, and I call over, about to say that I'm going to go down the hall. My buddy stands up, and he goes, you got a poop, dude? I was like, it's not a warrant. You don't have to confirm it, but yes. So I haul ass running. I go do my thing, and I come back, and nobody's on the phone anymore. I'm like, oh, it's over. It's over, finally. So I'm sitting there. Just kind of laughing at myself, like, I can't believe this happened. Phone rings again. Same freaking people. They still haven't gotten this guy because he went into the county, turned around, and went back. And I'm like, drop the stop sticks. I'm going through my own shit right now. (laughs) Literally going through my own shit. And as I'm talking, it happens again. (laughs) Like nervous poops, man. Like this trilogy of poo now that is going to happen. And I put them on hold, yell back over. And I say, I'm going to go right here. And they're like, oh, shit. No, no, not right here. Not right here. I'm going to use this bathroom, okay? So I get in there. I turn on the water all the way. I turn on the fan. Anything to mask the hell I'm about to go into. Because if you've seen Dumb and Dumber, you know exactly what was going to happen. I was going to be in there crying and screaming. Finish what I was doing. I come out, and both of my coworkers are just laughing. I'm like, screw you guys. I'm going to turn the heat up so that you can smell it. (laughs) I was a supervisor on that time. So years later, I'm on a family trip. I'm going through Montana. We stop at a gas station. And I'm walking through, and I, I get a weird twitch. I was like, oh, that's familiar. And I turn around, and there's a cooler with Red Bomb burritos next to a kiosk of Red Bull. And all I could think was, screw you, Montana. That's my story. I want to thank you all very much for being here for the session and sharing your stories. Please hold your heads up high. Not a lot of people can do the job that you do. So thank you very much. So, what did I tell you? (laughs) That's some of the stuff that happens in 911. And, you know, it, it only takes one story. I say it all the time. It takes one story 
to make the rest of them just whoosh, just go downhill. But man, you cannot make this shit up. That's that's just the way it is. You know, whether it be 911 or in the ER or anything like that. And some of these stories you just can't make up and you start thinking, is this real life? And it is. So <laughs> again, thank you all very much for being in the Imagine Listening session. It was it was an honor to be there with all of you. And uh, you know, as 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 I always say, raise your head up high because not a lot of people can do this job. And you are all amazing at what it is that you do. I am I am so proud to be a part of this Thin Gold Line family, the I Am 91 movement, all of it. Thank you for everything that you do is the most vital piece of public safety. If you have any comments, questions, or you ever want to be a guest on the show, you can email us, and that's going to be wttpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter. That is at 91 Podcast. You can like us on Facebook. That is facebook.com slash within the trenches podcast. Uh, this episode is sponsored by In Digital Rapid Deploy as well as Carbine. Shout out to patrons as always. If you want to become a patron of the podcast and help support us, you can check us out, and that's patreon.com slash WTT podcast. This can be seen on uh, YouTube, Twitter, as well as Facebook, and then you can listen 24-7 on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, your favorite podcasting app, and within the trenches.net. Have a good one, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.